Welcome to this quick teardown video to see what's inside this old school drill. It's been quite a good workhorse, but it's um, as usual fallen foul to the battery issue. They've given up the ghost. Um, this is a Challenge Extreme BD5520, so it's an Argos special. I think it's about 2008, possibly this one. And it's alright, um, one single gear, it does have some torque options, reverse forwards, and uh, the trouble is it's it's got NICAD batteries, so pretty old technology now. And it was a pain because every time you took it out of the box it would be flat, so you'd have to charge it before you use it, so you can't really, uh, you can't uh, just ad hoc go and drill, you have to plan in advance to make sure this is charged. It was pretty quick to charge, I mean it says an hour, I think it was a bit longer than that, but um, it was okay, it was quite powerful, quite torquey, um, but unfortunately due to their age and I guess the amount of cycles, they're not keeping the charge anymore. The charger is also an absolute brick, and this weighs, oh this weighs a lot, maybe three kilos. So a big charger, big battery, fairly heavy big drill, so not really the most comfortable thing to use. Uh, it came with two batteries and a case, and they just kind of go in like that. And then you press a little micro switch, and it charge in about an hour. So, but uh, yeah, but let's see what's inside. I've had a go at it already, just to have a quick look, because this this grip comes off. It's not r rubberized. It's kind of a weird, smooth plastic. So that comes off first, and then we need Phillips screws. So let's get these out. Should use an electric screwdriver to do this. Thankfully nowadays we've got lithium ion batteries which hold their charge really well, you know, for days or weeks. And that makes a massive difference to being able to use a drill whenever you want rather than having to charge it before first use. You know, I did try and keep this one in good order by charging it every so often, um, not charging it when it was um, just used, so the batteries were hot. We'll have a look inside the batteries as well, let's see what they're all about. I did think about upgrading it to newer battery cells, but I'd probably have to change the charger as well, and it just wasn't worth it. Right, let's have a look probably going to be destructive to open it because I suspect it won't come cleanly. It's got this collar on and I've had a quick look and I haven't quite worked out how to get the chuck off and the actual drill end here. I mean there are screws in here but I've taken the screw out of the middle but it's nothing really came off so I don't know whether you have to be brutal with it. Oh well, there we are, didn't need to do it. What have we got in here then? Hmm. Quite a big motor. And obviously the gearbox at the front, so that accounts for the weight of it. So there's your battery terminals. You've got your trigger here. And it was it was quite good to control. So for screwing uh, screws, it was quite good to be able to start slow and, and you know not strip the heads. It was quite good for that. And there's your reverse on there. So there we go, nice little switch. Oh, it's a micro switch, of course, yes. Initially I thought it might be some sort of uh, gear selection, but no, yeah, it's just a, uh, yeah, obviously makes sense. Reverse the polarity. And there's a chunky heat sink here, look. What's that? That's a uh, 303-321. Probably look that one up. Hmm. And there we go. Chen Kang, 14.4 volts. Yeah. God, that is a monster. So I'll probably uh, 
open up these gears as well and see what's inside there. But I think we might need some cloth or something because that's going to get everywhere. Yeah, with half of the batteries, it still works okay, although it's a bit old and crude these days. And that says 7.2 volts on there. You can see how filthy it is, all the carbon. Okay, so that's that. Not much else inside the case. Um, so what do we need for that? Phillips again for that. And then we can take that apart and see what's inside. And that will be a mess, so I'll do that in a moment. In the meantime, let's get one of these open, battery packs. I've had one of these open before actually, just to see if it was something I could easily uh, buy in iCAD cells and replace, but yeah. In the end, sad as it is, it's gonna be easier just to uh, dispose of this, get the batteries disposed of correctly and then chuck it really. It's just not worth repairing. Uh, with only one gear as well, it was never that good for drilling. It was okay, but you couldn't really get some serious high speed out of it. The torque was definitely okay. No problem there. But for serious drilling, you need some, some high speed. And a drill with two gears is a lot better. Oh, wow. Oh, these have actually... I lift that off. These have got a bit yucky inside, a bit moist. Ooh. So you can see what's happened to that. They've begun to leak, I believe. Yeah. So, ooh, they are crusty. They are crusty, crusty, crusty. Oh, look at that. So what have we got in here? What are these? 1.2 volts. 1300 milliamp hour cells from Honyo. Honyo? Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hmm. Bit of paper at the bottom. Yeah, that's uh, that's gone. So that's that. God, it weighs a ton. So that will go to the uh, battery recycling area. Anyway, I'm going to find out what this is, and then we'll get this apart. Well, this was a power MOSFET, so it's good for uh, high power applications and fast switching, I guess, because it's uh, designed for a quick stopping and starting in the other direction for the drill. So that's one that's got a beefy heat sink on it. Right, let's open it up. Before I get loads of bits on the carpet. So I guess this will just have a load of gears in it. Well, I say a load of gears. A way to uh, create some torque and then there'll be the uh, torque adjusting mechanism in here as well so it'd be interesting to see what that's all about I don't know if the motor's good or not chain kang I'd say it survived oh there we go look at that cool planetary gears uh, you can see one's still stuck on there so they were in this position if I put them back there we go so that was like that then there's your, this is coming off the motor, there's your central gear off the motor. And it can drive these like that, check that out. That is mesmerizing, isn't it?
What's under here? Anything interesting? No, just the motor gubbins. Lots of grease. Still feels all right. Yeah, quite nice. Uh, can we go any further with this without having to get that front off? Okay, I want to be able to see how this torque system works. I'm probably going to have to somehow take it apart. Ah, and there we are, look, as if by magic. Ha <laughs> ha. So on the back side, there's loads of ball bearings. And another three little cogs in there, look. Nice. And then here, that's just spinning straight to the uh, end of the drill there. So how does this torque thing work? I think this just adjusts up and down to give you more chance of it slipping so on the minimum setting it would slip really easily but when you torque it up to the higher figures it must stop the uh, ability to slip but that's in there somehow But yeah, that's quite a neat little piece, isn't it? There we go. So there's basically just a ring of uh, it's like a, a cog, an internal reversed cog. Neat. And then these will actually uh, act on it from the inside. Pretty cool. Okay, so I wanted to look a bit more at the um, the torque section. So I've just sawn that one off. As you can see, that was that was around here like that. So I've had to butcher it big time, cutting it down and cutting it off completely. And inside here, this uh, orange ring would uh, increase or decrease pressure on this spring here and in turn that actually the torque mechanism is actually all part of this inside here with the ball bearings. Um, I'll put a link to a good animation in the description below so you can see how that works. So depending on how much or uh, you know little you screw the torque setting in this collar would push against the spring and cause tension on this mechanism and part of all the ball bearings and the planetary gears that's what creates your torque. And then this whole mechanism will either slip or um, be pushed so far that it doesn't slip at all. Um, against here, so it's all kind of part of one piece, or rather here. So when you have the torque that's slipping, I think you're hearing these, these stepped bits here making the noise. So it's quite clever. But oh yeah, check out the animation and then you'll see how the talk section works.